everybody welcome back to musings by nikki today we're here for just um kind of a craft along when i had done uh my artsology um design team project for deb i had crafted along one of the elements that i showed um but i had shown several different things that i had made with her kits and so um I had gotten a couple of people asking if I could show them how I made the other things that I showed as well. So sorry that it's been a minute, but I'm here to do it now. <laughs> and uh, so two of the other things that I showed using her kits, her um, toadstools, mushrooms kits, which are just lovely, uh, are this little kind of wallet floating pocket thing that you could use as a floating pocket. I am using it currently uh, in a journal like this. So I will sew it in, um, like this, which I, I love, but you could technically, you know, you could use it to just as a floating pocket. You could just stick it in, you could put it in a pocket. Um, you could clip it onto the edge of a paper. I mean, you could use it in lots of different ways. You could make it smaller, but, uh, this is what I've made. And then I also made this, which is a, an envelope that flips up. And then this tag that has a pocket here, right here, and then a pocket here and opens up to just some hidden kind of now journaling space back here. And then the back, the top of the envelope, right? The flap creates a tuck spot there that you could tuck something into. So um, I'm going to, let's, let's put this one aside and we'll work on this one first. So um, what I want to show you is that these are the, I'll just remind you, these are the, um, they're actually eight and a half by 11. So if you, just the way that she has them in the shop, if you download them and print them, they will print as a full page image. These I have printed, so there are the four of these images in the kit. These I've printed four to a page. So they, they go down to this size which is awesome because they work, if you print them for to a page, they work really good for like cutting out and using them as journal cards, or you can cut this way and do what we're about to do. Um, you could, so, you know, you could make two of these pockets, these with these, and it'd be smaller. So if you wanted to tuck them into books or something, you could. This I printed two to a page. So you can see how it's much larger. So this printed this way on the page, two to a page, and I've cut them out and left them connected in the middle though. So this, you can see where the white space was, right? So you could do the same thing, cut these out, but leave this middle. So cut this whole section like that and then fold it in half. So you could do it that way we're going to do, I have already gone ahead and printed out and cut and inked. So you don't have to watch me do all the inking. Um, so I just printed it out to do a page. These are the other four of, you know, two of the four images. So I've already cut it out. There is the little space in between that I have just folded and I've inked it really heavily and you can't even tell that there was really white space there. Plus when I'm going to use it, I'm going to sew it into a book. I'm going to bind it in. So you really won't see that edge at all. Then I've inked on the inside and I've just used my makeup brush to swirl around the ink to kind of take away some of the brightness of the ivory cardstock. Um, I don't know who, who, I don't know who gave this idea first. I've seen Tracy Fox do it and Girl on the Ridge, I think, and Mrs. Coggs. And I've seen so many people do it, but it's brilliant. So this is not my idea, but if you haven't seen this yet, let me just tell you, you dab it on your ink pad and swirl it around like this. And this is just like a blush brush or a foundation, foundation brush, a real fluffy one. And it's awesome because it doesn't leave any marks. Like if you took your dauber and did this, it would leave the little circles or the streaks from this sponge, but the brush feathers it on there and just leaves this lovely haze. Ah, oh, it's awesome. It's a great trick. So whoever 
came up with that. I don't know who to credit, but it's not my idea. Okay, so I have this little folder thing prepared. And what we want to do is um, we're going to rip out some masking paper. So let's grab the giant, giant roll of masking paper. You guys, at the end of this video, I'm going to give away some of this masking paper because honestly, remember how I have enough until, you know, like the Lord comes back because there's just no way I will ever use this much. And I've heard from so many of you that it's um, difficult to find where you are or that your Walmart doesn't have it or that you live, you know, in another country that doesn't. Um have anything like this or you can't find an equivalent put that back over there so I'm just gonna give some away I'm gonna rip off a well cut off a whole bunch of yards of that stuff and we'll just give some away so at the end of this video I will tell you I don't know I'll make something up some way to give it up uh, give it away what I'm doing is trying to just rip really messily a pocket I want it to be about as wide as my card and I want it to have enough that I can fold over. See how that's folded over on top there? Fold over an edge and what that does is give it a little bit more stability at the edge that you're going to be putting things in and out of because it really is pretty thin. So you don't, you if you had it just like this, I can see that that would probably tear. So, um, so that's already... So we're just going to rip, there we go, okay, then I'm going to rip off the top edge that we will fold over, this stuff has been so cool to work with though, you guys, um, because it's thin and so that's the thing that I love so much about it, is that it doesn't bulk up your book at all. You know, you can layer a lot of it on there. So I'm going to fold this over just slightly so I can kind of see where I want my bottom edge to be. So I'm going to say right about there-ish. So, and then all these little tear-off pieces work great as you're making little collages on the corners of things or you know if you're doing whatever they they're a lovely thin piece of scrap for that okay so see how we're doing here making a pocket that i'm going to sew on but first we also have to make these little pockets so let me let me rip the other one here this isn't quite straight so let's see if we can make it a little straighter Okay. So how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying, well if you're here in the U.S., I hope you're enjoying your summer um, so far. I realize that it is not summer everywhere <laughs> right now. I have news. I have, for various reasons, decided with, along with my husband and our girls, have decided that I will no longer be teaching. I won't be working at the school anymore. So I am now officially a full-time stay-at-home mom slash struggling artist. <laughs> And uh, it's both exciting and sad, and I have had to deal with a lot of emotions around it. Okay, there we go. We have those two pockets. Um, also, what I'm going to do then is take one of the, this is, let me see if I can find another one that I printed on, not vellum. Well. I've already used one of the tags, but here's the, the envelopes, and then they come with these two um, 
journal cards that fit inside the envelope. So there it is on cardstock. Here it is on vellum. So I'm going to take these two pockets over here and cut, I'm going to just cut them apart from the envelope. And then we're going to tear around them and use them as the front little pockets on the fronts of these. Like this. So I'm going to sew those on to create these little pockets on the front before I sew that on. Um, I'll separate them too. And I'm just going to give them a messy tear as well. Um, I'm going to keep the top though. I'm going to keep the top straight just because it works better to put things in and out of the pocket if it's straight. If it's torn, stuff gets cut or cut, caught on it. Um, so anyway, I, it's, it's been full of emotions. The decision has been full of emotions and, um, because I have some very good friends that are colleagues there and I just, you know, I love the kids that I work with. Um, and it is sad that I won't get to see some of them through their senior year or their freshman year or whatever. But like many of my wonderful colleagues, or my husband have said and reminded me that there will always be another, oh, I just want to see this kid through their senior year, or oh, I just want to see this kid through their, you know, freshman year. There will always be that and I will never actually be done. And because of some health issues and um, yeah, a variety of things, but this will be better I will also be able to be a lot more present for my girls doing their online school, which will be awesome in the fall. And it kind of makes us mobile so that if my husband travels for work, we will be able to travel with him because they are both doing online school. I'm just going to ink roughly around the edges here. Again, I'm using my, um, am I using my, yeah, gathered twigs. Sorry, it's really hard to see because these have been, of course, no, I'm not. That's vintage photo. Oh my gosh. From setting my inks on top, you know, it's just straight up. Can't tell what it is. Oh, and I'm using a brand new job or two. I just replaced my sponge, so it takes a minute for it to get fully inked up. Um, anyway, with both of the girls doing online school, we'll be able to be mobile. So if he goes somewhere for work and we want to go along with him, I will not have work tying me down and the girls can do school from wherever, um, which is nice. Even if we just want to go visit family, we will be able to do that. So that's my big news. It is big news in my world. Packing up my room for the last time um, was quite emotional. And there are still days where I have to tell myself that I am truly a stay at home now because it just feels like summer. You know, I always have summers off. So it just feels like I've got the summer off. But I have to keep telling myself that I won't be going back in the fall. I'm also going to ink around these, but let me grab my. Um, the one thing is you can't really hold this in ink around it because it, it's so thin. So I just get a piece of my, you know, scratch paper stuff and I kind of just ink, swirl ink around on the edges. And I'm using my gathered twigs because it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit more orangey kind of almost than the vintage photo. And the vintage photo is basically the same color as this masking, <coughs> as this masking paper. So you can't really see it. And then I'm going to fold this up and ink the torn edge that will be sewn down. Might be time to re-ink my stamp pads too. that one more one more go over there and then 
I'm going to do this pocket too. All right. I'm almost done with that. Um, thanks to everybody who watched my last video of my book that I made for Tracy's design team project. Um, it was so much fun to make. And honestly, it was probably one of the hardest books to ship out <laughs> because I really loved it. Even my husband sent me a text one day from work. He must have been, well, I, he's not bored, but he must have been not so busy or over lunch or something, or he had me playing in the background, and he said, you know, I'm not into journals at all, but that book you made is really cool. And I was like, wow, that's actually high praise coming from my husband, who really doesn't get anything that I do on this, like, journal thing. Uh, okay, so we've got our two pockets and our two mini pockets. And then what I'm going to do is sew around the vellum pocket just a couple times onto the tracing paper or the masking paper. And then I'm going to sew, well, actually what I'm going to do first before I do that even is right along the top here, I have put a piece of twine and made a little loop on the end as kind of just a page tab. So um, this is the twine that I'm using and I've just doubled it over. Whoops. So I want a piece that will be long enough to hang off the edge of the paper as a tab. And then I need two of those. Okay. So what I do with that is double it over, so fold it in half, and lay it across the top of this torn part like that. And then what I'm going to do is zigzag stitch very carefully over the top of it, leaving this loop off the edge here so that it will hang off the edge and be a little tab. So I'm going to sew this to this. I'm going to sew the zigzag across the top of those. And um, then I'll stop back in. I'll show you what that looks like before I sew that whole thing to this. So I'll be back. I'm going to go sew. And then I will be back in a second. Okay, guys. So I have sewn the pocket on and I've sewn the trim on. What I wanted to show you... So this kind of just, again, the folded edge and this little bit gives it some stability at the top of the pocket. What I wanted to show you is <clears throat> when, um, just a couple of tips about sewing like trim or twine on like this, <clears throat> I leave it a little bit long on the end and that's so when I put it into my machine and um, I'm trying to get it lined up so I can put my presser foot down, I can actually pull these two pull these two straight at the back like this, right? And hold it down with one finger behind and one finger in front and then lower my presser foot right on so they're aligned. If I don't have long trim tails like this to hold onto behind, then this wants to go all over the place and get wonky. Especially since I'm trying to put two next to each other and line them up just perfectly, you know, to do this. Whoops, wrong way. Then also, can, let's see if I can get close enough. So can you see, it's just stitched over the top. Let me see if I put it with the white behind it, if that helps. Um, kind of, maybe not. There we go. So I've zigzagged. So what you want to do, if you want to sew twine or anything on, in case you don't know this, is that you want to set your zigzag stitch wider right? So you want to make it wider. Um, most of the time you can choose uh, on sewing machines. Mine, I can set the width. 
but usually even if you don't if you have a basic one there's usually going to be a smaller and a larger zigzag stitch you want the wider of the zigzag stitches because then it will literally just go on both sides kind of trapping like making a little cage around or trapping the twine in there and I do that a lot with twine um, and things like that in my books it looks really cool along the edge of a page if you just put down some book page and then zigzag over the top of a piece of twine it just adds a lot of interest so that's the way that's the way I do it I that's why I have this so then I just trim that off boom and so now I have the two pockets made I wanted to just show you what those look like right now I'm going to stitch them to the actual like folder itself so I'm going to stitch through um, around just again see how I kind of did sloppy stitching around a couple of times here on these that's just what I'm going to do onto this paper and then I will be back in just a second when I have done that okay bye all right so there we go I have sewn them on so we have pockets here and we have big pockets up here now um it is finished essentially right this is what we have um in this one I've just taken blank tags inked around the edges of them put a little sorry silk on top and put them behind here's what I why I like to use a blank tag here um because I certainly like collaging and stuff but you know because it's a vellum pocket meh it looks kind of meh on top of the brown but when you take a brighter white cardstock um, tag and put it behind there it actually almost like highlights the image that you want to highlight so there's some little flowers down here right but the butterfly if you put this behind it goes from meh to like oh look there's a pretty butterfly <laughs> and then same thing on this pocket I've been able to kind of highlight those mushrooms that's why the tags off to the side a little bit there so these are the exact same two pockets as there so I will probably do the same thing I'll just make two little tags to go in there um, in the back of this pocket I took one of the vellum envelopes and this is one of the times that I actually used the kit as intended <laughs> I took this envelope this vellum envelope and um, glue you'd glue blah, 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 blah. goodness sakes you guys I used glue stick let me clear some of this out so it makes sense what I'm doing here I just used a glue stick to carefully kind of adhere this down to some of the masking paper right so um, I'll just do it why not I'm using this glue stick that goes on purple I am not using my uhu or anything like that because this is not um, something that requires permanent C and this purple is actually I find for my reasons I love that this goes on purple um, because you can see where your glue is and then I'm just going to lay this down so it dries clear obviously I mean this looks like a mess right now right because you can see all the purple behind it but it dries clear so what I'm gonna do is um, I won't make you watch this whole thing because it's pretty easy to explain what I did <laughs> I just so this is backing it again since this paper the masking paper is so thin it gives this um, vellum a little stability and strength so it doesn't tear so easily or anything but it also makes it lined you know really nice um, so all I did was do this then you want to let this dry for you know a good probably 20 minutes or something until you can't see any of that purple and until it doesn't feel kind of damp because right now this feels a little damp um, from the glue so you just let it dry cut out around the edges fold it up like you would you know the normal envelope and then I once I got it folded to this stage folded the edges in and the bottom up I glued here along these sides and then I sewed just all the way around this edge like this so right on the edge of the envelope 
I sewed around. Not across this part at all and not, you know, to keep these on, just to give it some detail. And that actually, the sewing is kind of what keeps it together permanently anyway. Um, it's not pulling apart at all. So the masking tape, this glue stick has adhered it well enough that it doesn't feel like it's pulling away and it doesn't look like it's, I mean, they feel like they're one piece. So anyway, that's a little tip on that. We'll set this guy aside. And this I've just slipped inside of the top pocket here. So that's this one. That is this one. Then let's look quickly at this. Um, let me set these up here. So this one, this flippy flip up, flip out thing is um, fairly easy as well. So let's take a look at that. I have no idea how long I've been filming, but I've got some of this prepped already. Here's the page I'm going to put it on. Um, I have used for the tag that flips out, I've just used some Edith Holden paper. Um, my Edith Holden books have, um, one of them has thinner paper, but this one has actually kind of a thicker paper, which is really awesome. Um, because it makes great like tags and backgrounds for collaging and stuff. In this case, what you want is a tag that is about as wide goodness, as the page you're going to put it on. So, but not quite as wide, right? You want a little bit of an edge because if you bind it into the book, you don't want it going all the way to the edge. It'll get caught and stuff. So I've just left a little bit of an edge here and um, as wide because it's going to flip out like this. And then we're going to put an envelope over the top and it kind of that creates the flip and flip, right? So to create the pockets at the bottom of this, and again, I've already cut and inked, cut and inked, but let me show you where the pockets come from because they fold like this, right? And so it's the right way the image is the right way here, but the image is also the right way here. That's because I have, again, used vellum and this is the envelope and what I've done, this part here is this part here. And I think I tried to explain this in my other video as well. So I won't go into, you know, super detail, but scissors, cut out your envelope, but then cut the side flaps and the top flap off and you'll end up with this piece. So this image will be facing the right direction. When you fold it in half, this image, which is upside down right now, will actually be going the right direction as well. So this is the middle part of that envelope. When I fold it up, normally, you know, the sides would be here and the flap would come over the top, but we've cut all the flaps off so that we can put it on like this. Um, what I am going to do is sew around the edges like this. That will keep, sew both of the pockets on, right? And um, then I'll show you how I make a hinge for it. Then I'm gonna cut this out. We're gonna cut this out. I don't know, do you guys really need to watch me cut out the envelope? We're gonna cut the envelope out though. And um, the, we're not gonna do anything special to the envelope this time. We're going to actually use the envelope as it's intended, uh, which is one of the few times that I'm actually doing that. Um, we're going to use the envelope as intended to actually make an envelope. So I'm going to cut this out. As I do this, let me, um, let's talk about giving away some masking tape real quick, huh? What should we have you comment in the comments? Because you have to do a comment to win stuff because I use the random comment picker. So, I mean, it's great if you like my video. It's great if you subscribe. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to get my, I use my metal ruler when I do folds like this. Sometimes I'll get my scoreboard out and actually score it, but sometimes I don't 
do that because it's massive scoreboard and takes up too much space. So usually I go like this, line up. There you go. I know, I know what we should comment. Um, sorry, look, I have to be silent when I'm <laughs> lining the edges up or I get all confused. I'm trying to decide right now what direction, like what journal to start working on next because I'm darn near finished with this massive one that I've been doing using my Wildwood Wonder kit. I am my own design team. <laughs> so, um, I'm trying to decide though, which one should, what I have like a whole bunch of stuff for a whole bunch of journals. I collect and I find pieces and bits and then I, um, whoa, pay attention to what you're doing. Um, and so I collect them and then I have these big heaps and mounds of things. So I have a bunch of stuff set up to work through um, my storybook kit, um, which is kind of like a, I'm going to do the edges quick here. So the storybook kit is kind of like a, it's kind of in the same line as the Wildwood Wonder. It's like storybook woods, kind of like a fairy tale almost, but more of like a nondescript, not any one fairy tale, just kind of fairy tale-ish stuff. So I've got stuff to start working through that. I also have um, a whole bunch of boho journal stuff set out that I could work through. Uh, I also have kind of um, a very neutral kind of black and white journal that I'm really excited to work through using Tracy's silhouette kit. Um, all right. Oh, I'm just going to glue. I'm literally using this the way that it was intended. I'm going to glue. I am using my cosmic shimmer acrylic glue and I'm going to glue this side of the envelope so that I don't glue up too high here because I know that um, I don't want to go too high. I don't want glue laying around. Laying around. <laughs> so, what what direction do you should we go next? If you guys are enjoying crafting along with me, what should we craft along through next? Should we do... Oh, or I have a whole bunch of stuff also set out for going through and doing my naturalist kit as well. So should we do the naturalist? Should we do the storybook woods kit? Or should we do bohemian or black and white? Those are the four choices. What do you guys want to see me crafting next? Because honestly, I can't decide. Those are my four choices and I can't decide what I want to do next. Did I do this edge? Yeah, I did. Okay. So this is my envelope that's going to flip up like this, right? Then we're creating this tag here. It's going to flip out. So what I'm going to do is, oops, I just shut that. Now I'm not going to be able to find it easily. I'm going to go sew around the edge of this really quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have sewn around the edge of this, creating the pocket here and the pocket here. And I've also cut a hinge. Well, I didn't cut a hinge. Um, this is just literally, the, these are the off cuts of paper um, when I'm sizing it for a journal. So I always keep these because they create these brilliant hinges. They also are great for paper ruffles and um, all that kind of stuff but they make great hinges. So I just fold it in half and it's going to go along this edge here, right? So it's going to be the hinge that creates this uh, ability to flip it out here. And 
let's see right here you can see up at the top where I've made it angled on the tag side and it's flat on the other side right here angled here and flat here and then I've just zigzagged it this side onto the onto the tag and this side onto the paper okay um, what am I doing <laughs> it goes in there like this so um, let's set that aside for a second and what we want to do is I've got my paper here and this is the page that I'm going to be putting it onto. So this, I've cut it long. I mean, I'm not going to need it this long, right? So I've inked around the edges and it's going to go on like so. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I want this to be fairly close to the bottom, lined up on the bottom edge here. Um, and then because this creates kind of, because this is a tag angled like this, uh, that's where I was showing you that we're going to angle that down. So we're going to go ahead and just trim down the edge, following the edge of the tag there like that. It needs to go just a little more like that and then I'm going to cut it along this edge. So now we have this funky looking thing like that at the top, right? But it's okay because at least it'll follow the edge of the tag now on this side. So I will zigzag right up to this zigzag down and then on this side there will just be this nice finished squared off edge and I'll probably cover that up with like a leaf or something like that anyway you could make a little collage or cluster up there so now what I'm going to do off camera again is I'm going to um, open the hinge up like this and I'm going to line the two pages up like this on my sewing machine deck right doesn't have to be precise and I'm just going to line up the part up here like this and I'm going to zigzag down this first well I won't line it up right away I'll zigzag down this first make sure that my hinge still closes then zigzag this side to this side and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like all right so I've got the hinge sewn on along the edge. This is what it looks like on the inside. So that folds in and out like this now. And the last part is just putting this envelope on to come down over the top like that to create kind of the finished flip up, flip out, right? So to do this, I'm going to open this up and then line it up again and zigzag across here. That creates on the back side, it creates a tuck spot at the top that you can stick things in, um, but it also just creates, it has kind of its own hinge then, right? So I'm gonna go do that and then I will be back to end this epic video. All right, so there we go. I've got it sewn on. That's what the, it looks like, right? So. It now let's close that up so now this flips in this flips down and it creates this nice little page for your journal um, so you can stick whatever you want in there in the other one I've just cut out the journal card and stuck that in there I'm not gonna make you watch me do that you all know how to cut things out um, so this flips up this flips out and then you can finish this however you want to in mine uh, in the example here, I just glued down some off cut of, um, this is like a misprint, um, the, on the other side, the ink ran out. And so this was what I had printed on the back side of it. And I just tore around the edge of that, glued it down with my glue stick and then put some washi to make it look like it had been taped on. Um, and yeah, so then it's a hidden journal spot, right? And then you can make whatever kind of tags you want to to go inside of uh, these pockets. Again, if you use, let me just grab, 
really quick here. If you use a, a lighter colored one, you can put it in and kind of highlight an image, right? Um, like I showed you before, but these are already on a lighter colored paper. Um, I've just used in this, in the example, I just used some of my uh, coffee dyed index cards. Those fit great there. You could put collage tags, whatever you want to put in there. Um, the only thing is, is I wouldn't put anything too busy because you've got busy here and busy here. So that's why I use kind of blank tags usually in this instance. Again, totally up to you. So there you go, guys. Um, I hope this was helpful. It was great hanging out with you again. Um, I don't even know where I put my other thing that I just made with you. <laughs> oh, here it is. All right. So there we go. We've got our two projects that we just did today. Um, and I will see you again. Oh, so if you want the masking paper, if you want some masking paper, I don't know, I'll send out like four or five envelopes of it. Um, so I'll draw a bunch. So enter away, guys. Comment, comment below. That's how you got to enter because um, I'll use the comment picker. So comment below whether you want to see, like if you enjoy journaling, journaling, I mean creating, crafting along with me, what should I start crafting next? Should I make the Storybook Woods one, the black and white kind of more neutral uh, journal? Should I make some boho stuff or should I do the naturalist um, journal Can't, along the same lines as this stuff with my naturalist kit? So you guys let me know what you think. What do you want to see? Um, because I will do whatever. I honestly don't have an opinion on the subject. I'd probably just, you know, paper, rock, scissors it or something. Ask my girls. So instead, I'm asking you guys, what do you want to see next? Um, hello to all my new people. Hello to all my old friends forever. Um, to Rebecca Legion, who just figured out who I am. Hi, <laughs> it's me, Nikki. I'm Musings by Nikki. I'm also Nikki Adigan. You can follow me on Instagram. You can go to my Facebook page, but I don't post as much there. I'm, I'm going to try posting more on Instagram um, because I can only do so many social medias because I just get, you know, it's just too much. Um, but I'm here and I'm on my Etsy shop and I will see you guys again very soon. Oh, um, one more thing. I have this super exciting, you guys, I'm super excited about this. Look at this. It's been drying by my feet. Now, it, it looks like a bunch of gobs of toilet paper right now. It's so awful. However, this is the book cover for um, my Wildwood journal. And it is this technique that I'm trying. I put it on my Instagram yesterday. Like, what do you think I'm up to? And I took a close up of this when it was still wet. And people are like, I have no idea, Nikki. Well, this is what I'm doing. I am making what, again, it looks awful, like a bunch of gobs of wet toilet paper. And it's still kind of drying because it's paper mache type of thing. I'm going to try and make it look like wood. Now, if this turns out good, I will do a tutorial if you guys are interested. Um, <laughs> and seeing how it looks like toilet paper, but if it turns out well, like I am in my head, I'm imagining this turning out really cool. So if it turns out like I think it will, I will show it to you in my next video, or maybe I'll just pop on and make a short video about what it actually looks like once I paint it up and it finishes drying and all that stuff. And if it turns out really well, then maybe we'll do a tutorial if you guys are interested in finding out how to make this like wood looking book. I hope it's going to turn out really cool. I'm going to put it back down here under the fan. Um, so anyway, okay, that's it. I'm leaving. This this is probably like over an hour by this point. I don't even know. So thanks, guys. Uh, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, wherever you are on whatever side of this planet you're on. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you guys again very soon. Love to you all. God bless. Bye-bye.